Hello! This is the One Episode Rule, a broadcast about first impressions. I am Magpie. I'm bring a I'm really bring a joke this time. I, we're, we're, <laughs> you don't want again. We're a joke. past the need for jokes. We're no more jokes. I can. I, I watched more anime, but not any like greater or lesser mm. great than last week. So that joke, we can't do that joke again. <laughs> yeah. How how are you guys? Doing? <laughs> um, I'm I'm okay. I'm Blackle. Um, coming to you live uh, from the back rooms. Mm. Nice. Um, Wiggle right in there. Chilling. Better Looking reception like, than I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, it's all like I mean, like it's all like that that buzzing you hear. It's just like uh, internet radio waves. So, yeah. did you uh, find a room with like endless uh, servers in it? Because that would be a really good back rooms room. I think I, I did. Um, but like I tried plugging into one of them, and literally all it was doing was just playing simulated Among Us games constantly. Oh. Mm. Oh no! <laughs> at least you didn't. At least you didn't find the one that's just a room full of uh, full of PC towers generating dwarf for, uh, dwarf fortress world. It gets really hot in there. <laughs> yeah, I've heard people have died. Anyway, well, yeah, yeah had heat stroke. Um, world, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joey. Not coming to you from the back rooms today. Um, Why not? Maybe next time. I'll 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 get in there eventually, but uh, not this yeah. time. Um, I uh, today this this was an animeless week for JoJo. Hmm. Um, sometimes it happens. I've, uh, I've been too Warframed out. That's all. <laughs> sometimes you gotta do other things, like read books from 30 years ago. <laughs> yes, I've been doing that too. <laughs> so, uh, let, let's get to it. Uh, I don't really, I don't really have, well, I don't really have news this week so much as, uh, as one item and then a list of complaints. All right, so, fair. Uh, um, this one item is, uh, it appears that Junji Ito has won an Eisner Award. Congratulations, oh, Ito-san. Congrats. <laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> um, that, that, that's, a, that's a great honor, I've heard. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, Okay, so to the complaints. Every time, every time I try and look up news, I am confronted with page upon page of announcements about whatever, like whatever first half of the sentence in another world. And it's going to cause me to have a panic attack. <laughs> they got too many isekais going or I saw the, I saw, I saw this many in five, in five minutes trolling for news before the, before the show saving, uh, saving 80,000 gold in another world. Uh, the reincarnation of the strongest exorcist in another world. Uh, uncle from another world delayed. Actually, that one actually seems interesting. But <sighs> yeah. like, I don't, if, oh, listen, I'm can, only interested in things in this world now. I was going to say, can we do ones <laughs> in this world? We got a world right here. It's perfectly fine. I mean, we I might have to dust it off a little bit. But... Or, if or if your world is different, it should be sufficiently different that it doesn't have to be distinguished by the, by the preceding <laughs> word, another. <laughs> you know, yeah, it, it really, take, it, uh, us, take us to uh, the back rooms. Like, Let's have uh, a back rooms anime next. Like the phrase "another world" is becoming like menacing to me because it's just like <laughs> another one and another <laughs> one and another one. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a it's a quirk of how Japanese is translated into English, but it's a weirdly prescient one. <laughs> I think they should do an isekai, but it's like. A universe that's so different that the concepts are like completely changed. It's air- not even recognizable as an anime. Oh, you want yeah. some? You want some old non occludian uh, Yeah. Isekai. <laughs> yeah, give give it to me. I think that would be great. Uh, the second thing is is uh, uh, not really news, but I just I just happened to catch today uh, a episode of Mother's Basement about. Uh, previous alumni of the podcast rent a girlfriend uh, and i am i am glad to report that everybody else seems to think it's just as fucking bad as i did <laughs> uh, god you, that show is fucking irritating <laughs> you can't you can't talk about uh our our household beloved <laughs> yeah i remember y'all thinking that was promising uh, my my roommates love that 
I, I watched the full first season. I did not think it was promising. I think that I th- I think that that main character is the worst harem anime protagonist, and that's the worst kind of protagonist already. <laughs> I don't like. But that's him. what makes him good. No, it yeah, makes him bad. It makes me want to push his face into the dirt. <laughs> what about the grandma, though? Grandma, uh, grandmas are okay, but uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna have to get my 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 uh. Roommates just come here and bully you. About what, are you this. what are you? How are you gonna bully me? Mm-hmm. How are you gonna bully me? <laughs> well, we're I've, we've got you, three of us and one of you, you. So you begin from a from a position of weakness. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you like to think. Um, but, uh, it's just love, Hina again. <laughs> Except worse. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, well, and what really pisses what actually really pisses me off about it is that the animation in that show is top notch and all the character designs are really good mm-hmm. and they make you want to like these girls well maybe you could just open your heart a little bit no um, <laughs> uh, well to each their own I will and, crush uh, them with the, vo- with the titanic vault of my heart <laughs> anyhow it's okay to have different opinions um even when yours are wrong um so i have an anime to, to torment us with today oh i think boy. uh oh, well okay don't yell at me i've i've been i've been told that we need to watch it uh well. it is ruby ice queendom oh is that like different than ruby it is different than ruby i haven't, ruby. I haven't seen ruby either so i don't <laughs> well we'll see what you think of this but it started coming out on july 3rd of 2022 well shit so, it's, it's recent at least yep, it's well, that's something, new. we'll at least have something to talk about all right let's get to it I can't believe they were doing the Naruto run. I can't believe they were doing the Naruto run. Oh, did they do the Naruto run? God damn it, I wanted to bring up the Naruto run. They fucking did it. They were running with their hands behind their back. Like, in a wing. Like, they had wings. Like, they were flying. Like in the Naruto. Like in the Naruto. Okay, who who wants to read this blurb? I'll read the blurb. In the world of Remnant, humans and Faunus, human-animal hybrids, carry on their everyday lives. That's a spoiler, by the way. Carry on their everyday lives despite the omnipresent threat of the monstrous Grimm. Dedicated huntsmen and huntresses battle Grimm with both customized weapons and their own semblances. Unique abilities derived from the energy of one's soul. Some warriors also utilize... A crystallized energy propellant dust to bestow their weapons with elemental properties. In this dangerous line of work, rigorous training is required to stay alive. To that end, each of the remnants for kingdoms have established schools to properly groom children holding aspirations of becoming licensed huntsmen at Beacon Academy in the Kingdom of Vale, a promising group of Future Huntresses make their debut as Team Ruby, Ruby Rose, Wei Smee, Blake Belladonna, and Yang Zhao Long each become, each come from different backgrounds and often butt heads as a result. However, when they cooperate, they are a formidable force who have even attracted the attention of Beacon's headmaster, Professor Ozpin, alongside fellow students at the as such as those in Team Juniper, the young prodigy Ruby and her friends engage in adventures which pit them against an extremist faunus group known as the White Fang. Every explosive encounter also brings them closer to the true villains orchestrating conflicts from the shadows. That was a really long description. <laughs> is, is that what it's about? It told about us so me. much more. Because I didn't get any of that. I... <laughs> I well, thought that 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 Yang Xiao Long was and Ruby Rose were related. Yeah, they didn't come from different backgrounds. They're literally sisters. They are anyway, sisters in the same house, right? They, um, right. I don't know if they live in the same house, but they have the same dad. Yeah. Who's, 
who has an incredible look. Like he he looks like a Final Fantasy character finally aged out of his outfit. <laughs> my, yeah. my favorite part about the dad was that he's just chilling in the bedroom in his armor. He's, yeah, yeah, he's wearing his armor. He has a shitty little soul patch. <laughs> he never opens his eyes like Brock from Pokemon. Um, uh. He's wearing these weird... Oh, armor and shorts is always a weird look. It's... Uh, yeah, it's yeah, something. It's, just hang on. I've got to put on my pauldron <laughs> cargo shorts. <laughs> yup. Because where else will I put my headphones? Um. Uh. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll do a rundown on this. Uh, I'm going to spoil you listeners. Uh, not a lot happens. Like, they can be described directly. <laughs> well, the first episode's supposed to be, like, their introduction. Or assembling the up. Avengers, but we'll, we'll talk about that later because I've griped. <laughs> but anyway. Yep. So uh, we open on, uh, what do we open on? We open on, on Ruby, the, the character Ruby, uh, talking to her mother's gravestone um uh her mother was apparently named summer rose um <laughs> what a theme name what a, what a theme name and her mother's other daughter was named Xiao Long. <laughs> 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 Xiao Long. but uh but anyway she's talking about uh how happy she is that her sister yang uh managed to graduate from one academy to another is that how we're doing this I, I don't know the details. <laughs> anyway, she, she graduated from a, a Signal Academy and is going to go to a prestigious uh, Huntress Academy called uh, Beacon. Uh, okay, cool, whatever. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Yao turns up on a, a, a Yao? Wow, I just, I just condensed the whole thing. Um, <laughs> um, Yang shows up on a, uh, a Ducati, just a motorcycle from yep. our world. <laughs> Um, shows up on a yellow motorcycle to uh, take her take her home, and she's like, "What are you talking about?" And it's just like, "I'm so happy you got accepted." And, okay, sure. Uh, I'm having trouble remembering the order of these scenes because they feel entirely disconnected from yep. each other. Yeah. Uh, do we do we move in on on white snow? We move in on yeah. white snow. We, we zoom in on white snow. Oh my god, y'all! <laughs> having known like literally any German. It's just everything just so on the nose. Vice. Well, um, I mean, I, to be fair, like they they are going for on the nose with these names. Like, yeah, that's true. if you're not getting the like theming, like Ruby Rose is entirely red themed. Weiss Schnee is entirely white themed. Blake Belladonna's black. Yang Xiao Long is yellow. <laughs> I don't okay. get how Blake Belladonna is like. Obviously. I was yeah, well. I was gonna sneak a joke in there, but you kept talking. So <laughs> Sorry. it's just like, oh, you know, Blake Belladonna's theme is pornography. But I <gasps> um, <Stop>. anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna have a scene with with Weish Schnee, which, by the way, I wasn't prepared for Schnee, especially <laughs> in the way that her butler delivered it at the end I of the know. episode. Because he's just like, you're going to live up to the legendary name Schnee. And I was just like, Schnee? <laughs> Fucking Schnee? Schnee. Wasn't yeah. that the guy from Hook? It's the guy from Hook. It's fucking Bob Hoskins rolling the hook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very funny. Oh, uh, he's got to... <laughs> He's got to keep Hook from killing himself. But anyway. Stop it. So, uh, so yeah, uh, we, we come in on this character and we, we can't, and we don't know much about her other than they can tell everything about her personality from her character design. Mm -hmm. uh, she's an ice queen. Uh, she's yep. literally dressed as a ice queen. <laughs> she's got a cold and distant personality. And she's got, a, she's got a, a rapier. It looks like it has a gun in it, but I'm not sure. Um, it's got like it looks like it has a revolver cylinder in the middle, but no like way to fire it. All of their weapons are way too. Uh, they're much. not. They're not. We'll sensitive. get into it, but yeah. um, But anyway, uh, what her deal is is she is about to face her family's final test to allow her to determine her own destiny because she wants in on this on this huntressing shit too. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, her incredibly rich family doesn't want her to go into this and has uh, arranged a, a final test, which is that she must face one of these monsters uh, uh, alone in front of them. Uh, and, uh, and she says, all right, square the fuck up then. Bring it out. Bring this bitch out. <laughs> Uh, her dad is a non-character. He is an evil businessman. Uh, yeah, he's nothing. Um, but her, her sister might be something. Um, anyway, they, they're just like, well, all right, bring out the gimp. Uh, and <laughs> they, they have the, have the butler throw the, uh, throw the switch, uh, so that we can have a fight with, uh, I don't know, just like a big generic knight just creature. Just big suit of armor they, sort they, of thing. They're not, the, the monsters are not interesting at all. And given how important they are to the lore, that's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It no, is. That was, that is a problem carried over from the original. But I, I am going to bring some of that uh, when you get finished with the summary. Oh, shit. I didn't even know if you'd seen the original. But, oh, uh, I, I saw the full first. I was watching it when it was coming out. So, okay. so, uh, so anyway, yeah, they, they, uh, they have a, they start a fight or rather they're about to start a fight because we're going to cut away again because we have to, we have to approach some other characters, Yep. which is we have to approach some phantom thieves going to rob a, rob a train for some dirt. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they... the, the magical substance in this is just called dust, it's called which dust. is kind it's of funny. It's rude. It's really funny when they get to the store later, but I'll get to that. Um, 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 isn't, isn't this whole scene just like a Final Fantasy like side quest? Like it feels like the intro of one of those FF13 games. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're gonna knock over a train, and it's just like, oh, don't worry, there's no, there's no people on it. Um, well, it turns <laughs> out later there's people on it, but whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, Belladonna. Uh, uh, I well, you can't just say the black one because that'll give you the wrong impression. <laughs> um, yeah. the girl with the the bow in her hair. That might have been more interesting, but anyway, <laughs> uh, Belladonna is going to knock over a train with I don't know some asshole. He just looked like some asshole. His he's name wearing, is literally Adam. He's he's he's, he's wearing Inuit snow goggles which i think is very strange uh-huh. i think they i think it's meant to be a cool mask but it really just looks like like inuit snow glo- snow blindness glo- goggles <laughs> yeah uh there's yeah we'll get into that <laughs> um, well anyway they drop into this train and, oh shit there's robots in here because this is this is a train run by the a nebulous company um, and they're just like, oh, we work for White Fang, so we got to steal from the comp. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, they have a bad action scene. Th- this will become apparent later, but there are good and bad action scenes in this show. Yep. Uh, so they have a they have a, a kind of dumb one. Uh, <laughs> um, they fight their way through that. Uh, Belladonna does something which just irks me so much that I'm continuing to think about it, in which she, she has, like, a sword gun, like everybody else. But <laughs> She has a pair of sword guns, but hers are, like, connected to the, to these, like, hoses. So it's and, like a, whor- a sword gun whip? And she's, she throws it out, and you think it's gonna be like, oh, she's gonna do the Kratos on him, the blade at the end of the stick. But no, she just throws it out, and then shoots them with the gun part yeah the gun from a a little bit closer (laughs) he goes into their faces and shoots them i guess (laughs) my dear it is a firearm you could have just shot them (laughs) but that's not stylish though this wasn't stylish either it looked dumb as hell (laughs) oh it's stylish too early 2010s anime viewers. When did this come out? Is my I question. don't understand. This came out this month. It did, but I do I do need you to know that like this almost scene for scene is playing out pretty much exactly is how... Is this a shot for shot and remake? Well, not shot for shot, but like it's like it's very, very much all of the same story beats. What, whatever. Who, who's and, the next scene below? I, I miss it. I can't. Uh, I think. Breathe. Did they go are back we, to Weiss? Are we going back to Ruby or Weiss? One of them. I don't remember. <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
we're going back to Ruby. I think we're going back to Ruby, <laughs> which is uh, we're going back to Ruby and what she's out. She's out on the town because she's uh, she's in a big the the big city, uh, and she's having a look around to find a gift for Yang to celebrate her graduation. Um, her acceptance. And she's, yeah, yeah, her acceptance to the prestigious academy, uh, and she's uh, been all around town and been at some weapon shops and listen to some music at the music shop. Uh, and she's wasted all of her time. She's like, oh, God, what am I going to do? Oh, hey, there's the Dust Store, which, by the way, is named From Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I, 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 okay, that one got me. But the I font laughed. is like, the font is like bad. Which <laughs> yeah. Is, um, I mean. <laughs> so, so anyway, she, she goes in there and I, I don't know what they sell because it it's very the whole interior of this store is like a subtle joke if you continue to look at it. But my favorite thing about it is apparently this stuff is like magic powder. You know, so it's it's so it's magic coke. Um it's, I thought it was funny that it was in tubes, like it was candy. Yeah, like this was a big candy that's, shop. That's that's what broke me, is it has these big <laughs> tubes that run down from the ceiling that you can fill up your dust receptacle with. Yeah. But they really uh, look like they're they I just had this flashback to to Notch's terrible candy mansion, <laughs> where all the oh, candy is just candy. rotting in the tubes because he doesn't, he doesn't have, have any friends. friends. <laughs> Oh, oh man! Yep. And I just started thinking about wait. It's just like it's just like colored sand, like you used to do <laughs> at the fucking at, the, at like <laughs> at like the carnival where you'd get the sand art. Are yes, you serious? The sand art. Oh, and then I started God. thinking about them cutting it up into lines on the counter and snorting stop. it like coke. Stop. And I, I couldn't stop. I'm going to die. Anyway, she drops in and she starts reading a magazine about weapons because she likes weapons or whatever. Uh, and um, then some dudes show up to rob the place, and then we cut away because we have to we have to go back to to Miss Schnee again. Schnee. Um, Weiss's fight is uh, is going. She's having a fight. She's having an anime fight. Um, mm -hmm. It, this scene is mostly eaten up with that. Uh, she has a very elaborate anime fight where she casts a number of spells and shit and slices and dices and gets punched in the face. Um, and then she has like a moment where her, she flashbacks to her sister talking to her like, if you like, die, you, can't, you are dead. <laughs> you can't take hits. You'll just fucking die. So, um, <laughs> It's like thanks that was really good, good advice that will good advice fight now good advice sis uh but she uh yeah yeah she does she does win the fight she uh she somehow disarms it she runs on, on the sword which gets a lot bigger than it was before but yeah we're inclined <laughs> to for, we're inclined to forgive um it was it was okay it's fine um, he disarms him she sets his hand on fire uh he tries to punch her with it which is you know you gotta you gotta admire the gumption on this motherfucker <laughs> but uh no nah, and then she just blows him away with a spell um and yeah she wins that fight so she proved she she proved her folks wrong mm -hmm. um so she wins that one um uh, then we're gonna cut back to uh belladonna i think blake yeah yeah belladonna um we're kind of, we're cutting back to her because she has decided because they've knocked over the train the 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 dirt is theirs. Yep. <laughs> um, they get the dirt. Sad, sadly, it doesn't come in tubes this time. It just comes in boring crates with vials in them. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, they're just like, all right, we we got the mother load here. Well, let's derail the train. And she's just like, well, there's still human conductors on, right? And she's just like, yeah, but they're not like us. Fawn, a uh, fawn us. I'm just like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, no, it's supposed to, like, be mysterious when they say it, because they're going to talk, like, they're going to put that world building into a later episode, but then the, the, this, I noticed the blurb this, re reveals the plot twist, but... I noticed that this motherfucker had horns, and then I'm thinking, it's just like, wait, did Blake have any outwardly animal things? I um, cat ears. Did I miss them entirely? Oh, the my God. I cat ears. No, oh my bow, god, have I The bow developed... is hiding the cat ears. That that is why she wears the bow because 
Okay, good. Oh, God. They weren't actually visible. I thought no, it developed some visible. sort of anime-based cat ear blindness. No, she specifically <laughs> hides them. From, see- from seeing them too much. I yes. can't even fucking register cat ears anymore. No, you're not supposed to know she has cat ears, actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, she's just like, you know what? Sonic the Hedgehog t- told me that's not cool. So that's no uh, good. <laughs> So she uh, she walks into the next car and then she's just like, later, fucker, and decouples the cars so that they can't derail the train and kill the people. <laughs> I don't, okay, the here's the thing is, I don't know why they couldn't have just done that in the first place. Yeah, because they're bitches. It seems like he just wants to do violence to people, which, I mean, I... <sighs> I don't know. Uh. But, uh, but yeah, she's just like, I can't be like this. I think I'm going to resign from my terrorist organization. I'm going to change my ways and find a new path. Um, <laughs> so then we cut back. We're going to cut back to Ruby because Ruby's having an adventure, which is uh, one of these robbers snuck up on her while she was reading because she's wearing headphones. Her AirPods are in. Oh, God, yeah, she can't oh hear God, her. She can't hear them. <laughs> and the guy, the, this is the most worthwhile scene in this because this random goon is just like, hey, put your hands up and she doesn't do anything. He's like, hey, he like taps Hello? her on the shoulder. He's just like, <laughs> and she pulls her hood off and her headphones are on. And he's just like, uh, get your headphones off. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, what's going on? And he's just like, all right, put your hands. <laughs> she's like, are you robbing me? Like he's she like, didn't yes. notice the sword he brought with <laughs> <laughs> this dude is having the worst thing. <laughs> He's yep. like, I am trying to rob you. Will you show me some respect? <laughs> What's funny is the only thing I really know about this show um, is that, like, the intro was, like, supposedly, like, inspired by, like, that one scene in uh, Cowboy Bebop where, like... Yeah, where he's wearing the headphones. Up. And then, oh. like... The fact that this sort of went full circle and became an anime again is very funny. That's well, they do it in uh, Trigun as well at one oh, point. So. I have to say, sadly, the Trigun one isn't quite as good as the Bebop one. No, Bebop one is so fucking good. <laughs> and then they and then they and then they did it in the live action one and made me angry. It, um, <laughs> well, we can't get into that here. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's give this show its fair shake. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, uh, the next scene is, yeah, uh, she's going to lay some whoop-ass on him. She just throws that guy. she has powers. She has powers, don't you know? She's got powers and a gun scythe. (laughs) Yeah. She's going to put it on him. Again, Um, they're like, they are not detaching themselves from the early 2010s aesthetic at all. And I can, you know what? I can kind of respect that. Fair enough. um, I don't know whether this counts as a good fight scene because parts of it are good, but parts of it are bad. Um, yeah, that's how uh, I felt too. A lot of the moment to moment animation where she's trashing the dudes is pretty all right. But like anytime things, anything, anytime anything slows down, it, it yeah. gets bad. The only yeah. good thing in the, in like the interstitial scenes was whenever she pulled out the, the scythe and its head clunked into the ground. And <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty a bunch good. Of dust. <laughs> Which at I least like gives that. it weight. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she she whooped those guys' ass. And the, the guy who hired them as goons is just like, oh, good. I guess you get what you fucking pay for. Um, and he says, all right, I've got to get out of here. And he points his cane at her and fires the cane gun, but it has a little sight it's on it. It's the tiniest little It has the thing tiniest little out. sight. That is the most useless fucking sight I have ever seen pops up. <laughs> and he just fires like a smoke canister at her. Full of crazy purple knockout gas that doesn't knock that her does out. That does nothing to her. She is. She just like looks. She looks perturbed by it. Uh, she's like, what? What? <laughs> uh, and he's already halfway up a building. Uh, but she she, did, and she does for whatever reason decide to give chase. Uh, and she says, "You're not gonna get away." And he's just like, "Oh, really?" And he's just like, "I've got a bad. I've got a badly animated Harrier jet behind me." <laughs> And then he gets away. And then a I mean, mom appears. Yeah, he gets away and uh, also is about to dump a bunch of... You're missing an important part. What am I missing? Oh, whoa, gets flashbanged. <laughs> Don't do this to me. You can't, Black Hole. I can and I will. It, yeah, he throws a flashbang at her. He has to shoot it. What? It's the shittiest flashbang ever. Silly. 
Anyway, it, it, he's going to have the gunship dump a bunch of bullets into her, but she gets rescued by uh, by a uh, big titty teacher hunter. <laughs> yeah, this 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 is a mommy. He he gets rescued <laughs> by I am by Deedlet from Lados War. <laughs> uh. And uh. And yeah, rescued, but then she like interrogates her. Or... She, yeah, she's she she turns real she turns real bitch mode on her. She's just like, I'm gonna slap the shit out of you with a ruler. I'm gonna be a bunch of teacher. That wasn't a, a ruler. Of... That was like a leather like like yeah, it was a writing a full ass bondage whip. <laughs> yeah, like it was. Excuse me, it was a writing crop, and I wasn't even referring to it. Sit down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> You don't even know what it's called, uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, she she's gonna. I'm gonna throw a bunch of mean teacher tropes at you, <laughs> and yeah, she she drags her down to I guess a police station. I don't know. She takes her into the the uh, interrogation room. She's gonna get interrogated about being irresponsible. <laughs> yep. It's just a lecture. That's really all it is. Meanwhile. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yang and Dad have been looking for, and they're just like, just like, why are there explosions in town? Why are all these people unconscious in the street? Oh no! What did Ruby, Ruby do? Again. What did Ruby do? <laughs> and they uh, they catch up with her at the uh, at the station, uh, where she gets to meet uh, Professor. Oh God! Oz Ozark. Oh. I Os- don't know. Osbin. <laughs> I was going to say Osbert for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't really anything, but uh, and uh, he shows up with his extremely tiny glasses. His, They're his so little, little. And they have the wiggly sides. They have the wiggly <laughs> sides from Trigun. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I, I kind of hate them. <laughs> They're terrible. <laughs> They're like the size of nickels. The lenses on these. <laughs> you can't possibly see through them. He's a level 100 teacher, so, you know, <laughs> that's when you unlock that cosmetic. You unlock the, that cosmetic so people know to avoid you. But, <laughs> but anyway, he turns up literally with a plate of cookies and he says, just like, hey, I hear you're irresponsible and dangerous. Do you want to come to my school? <laughs> we want people like you. We want people like you to endanger the public. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, so yeah, she gets to skip two grades and uh, and join the academy with her sister, uh, and that that's pretty much the end of it. We wrap it up with all of these characters, uh, even basically finding out or preparing to enroll in this academy. Like yes. Weitz is getting her shit together on like an old timey like hotel luggage card, <laughs> being told to make proud the Schnee name. The Schnee name. <laughs> uh, Blake is getting her shit together from the hauntedest barn. <laughs> yeah, she just lives in a barn, it seems. She just lives in a barn in hell country. Um, <laughs> but she's got a golden ticket to join this academy as well. Uh, we already knew about Yang, so she doesn't get anything special. She just gets to hang out with her dad for a second and get a pep talk um, alongside Ruby. Uh, and they all get on a, they, they all get on like some sort of halo like drop ship to take them <laughs> to the academy, I guess. And uh, that's uh, they're gonna that get thing. literally dropped out of that ship like it's the fucking Fortnite bus. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to Halo drop. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, that's that's so it. That's... What do we? What do we have to say about it? Um. Well, first of all, as someone like I said, I I did watch the first uh, season of this, and uh, it did stick. I would say pretty close to the plot, maybe adding a little extra fluff in there, which, you know, I don't mind. Um, My first note is that, like, this looked better than I was expecting it to. But also, like, the original Ruby looked so bad that, (laughs) like, the bar was low. Yeah. I remember it. Really low. I remember the series being carried entirely by the character design on its main four characters and literally Uh no one else. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, the character design was the strong point of the series in general, because, like, my thing was that I didn't like the story. I didn't mm. like the world building. None of it really, like, 
kept me was the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's got that in common with this anime because let, let me tell you, for, from like a one episode rule perspective, literally no hooks. Yeah, I do not care. <laughs> yeah, I am. I thought it was going to be worse than it was, but it was still pretty bad. Um, um my main gripe. I, uh, well, go yeah. ahead. I just, I don't know. I just feel like. I don't know. It kind of left it left me feeling like left out. I guess weirdly because it was like, I, I just I just feel like we watch a bunch of anime, right? And it's like mm-hmm. oh, it's like some like uh, world built um, like fantasy world, and they're going to like a school or whatever. And it's just like it's never compelling for me. No, and no, it's no. Just no. Like, they're making so much of it, right? So it must be compelling to some people. But it's like, I, yeah, what do they no. see in this that I can't? It's there just were sort of lots of people out there that liked this one, but I don't know. This was never bitter, for me. Bitter sweet, I guess. That I'm just like, I um, don't know. you know, I'm. I am kind of happy for people that like out there that actually liked Ruby. Um, I don't have anything against them. I just, I, I want what they have. I have, <laughs> I have something against them because I, I remember when Ruby was uh, Ruby was invading fighting games with the worst sound clips I've ever heard. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I also uh, always feel bad uh, for Ruby because you know uh, its creator Montiom did pass away mm-hmm. like really early on in its production. So, like, yeah. mm-hmm. I always like feel really sad because like we don't know what his. We don't know what it was, was. Be, right? We don't know I, what it could have become. Yeah, because if I recall correctly, like he was like the brains behind like the fight scenes. Yeah. So like, well, well, now you're gonna make me feel bad because I was going because I was gonna launch into more criticism of this product. <laughs> <laughs> um, before you do that, the other interesting uh, tidbit that I had about this anime was I looked up the company that made this, and it was the same company that made Madoka. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> which I thought was very fun. Well, that oh, well, that's a shame. Um, <laughs> like I said, there there are parts of this that are good and parts of this that are bad. Uh, Weiss's fight and uh, part of Ruby's fight; those were good. Those were well mm-hmm. animated. Blake's fight terrible. Yeah. Also, random scenes throughout this whole thing laughably bad like walking through the town there was i swear to god i saw a jpeg no yeah um like between that uh like i didn't like when they kept doing the split screens over and over again it felt Mm. unnecessary but i guess that's a stylistic thing that i could forgive um also you could tell where they were skimping on their animation to save money for the Mm -hmm. fight scenes because like there would be it was especially noticeable um in uh blake's uh, not blake um in uh weiss's intro like there would be multiple panels where it was just mouths moving Mm -hmm. um I feel and like it, I feel like Yang, Yang got the worst of it because yeah. her her like face is like not on model sometimes. Yeah, it's strange. And, and I swear to God, she moved across the screen like that one GIF of uh, yes. God. <laughs> just they just dragged her along. They just fucking dragged her. <laughs> what a nightmare! It's very funny because they do that in the original Ruby too, and it looks so <laughs> much worse. It looks that's what I can't I cannot stress this enough however bad this is its problems it is so miles miles better than the original so so you're saying it's an up you're saying i don't like it the way it is and this is an upgrade this is an upgrade (laughs) (laughs) oh that's oh that's rough (laughs) um but yeah uh oh my other criticism that i really need to bring up Hmm. um all of the music was bad. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even, the music didn't even register for me. I didn't register any music during was the music? episode itself, uh, but the intro and outro were poor. There was a lot there of was an intro and bad outro? music. Yeah. There was definitely an outro. I can't even remember if there was an intro. There was the, like a... <sighs> the, the outro's music was bad enough that I registered. <laughs> <laughs> there 
was like this really loud, very crispy music playing during Ruby's fight scene. And I literally wrote, please stop the music. <laughs> please turn that down. <laughs> please. I can't do it. Um, uh, yeah. One, one more good note, dog. Hmm. Dog cute. The, the dog was the dog was cute enough. The dog was cuter before they showed its face full on. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe they should have run that through through the washer one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like dog. But the, but the rest of the dog was a perfectly standard uh, Pembroke Corgi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Looked a, a little bit like Ein's cousin. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not going to watch any more of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, as someone who dumped Ruby immediately after season one finished, no. But again, if you're someone out there who who was into Ruby or who thinks you uh, like this kind of content, go ahead and give it a watch. You'll probably enjoy it. It's it's serviceable enough. If, if you, listener, are into <laughs> the cute girls doing uh, whatever, it doesn't even matter, genre, then you can tell us about your favorites at oneepisodecast at gmail.com. That is one the word, not the number. Uh, tell us your Ruby team name, I guess, at Twitter. <laughs> we are at one episode cast. The insistence of this show on making me pronounce that like Ruby. <laughs> did you see how they did they did you see the other team yeah well i get you know what that one makes even makes some uh, some sense but the vowel in ruby is a w and that's nothing <laughs> Real and, the, uh, and the only reason i'm not making fun, more fun of it is because i can't say it Ruwubi. Ruwubi. from the makers of the witch <laughs> you know, if, our, if our team name included Emma, we'd because we need Emma for the vowel. We'd be Jim, <laughs> Jim, 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 the holograms. Um, Jim. <laughs> like we didn't even ask you. You're not going to watch more of this, are you? What would you say if I said I was? <laughs> I would say, hey. Nothing. I don't dine to predict your actions. <laughs> Um, no. Go for it. The answer is no. <laughs> we already knew. 